Hello and welcome to this lecture where we are going to start the implementation of the machine learning algorithms. We are going to use Orange tool. It is one of the simplest ways to start projects using machine learning. You can access the official website orangedatamining.com. If you want, you can navigate through this website to see more information and tutorials about the tool. We need to click here, Download Orange. It is possible to download the tool according to your operational system. After clicking this button, a file will be downloaded and you just need to execute it and follow the instructions. I'm not going to show this process step by step because it is a matter of following the instructions on the screen. After Orange is installed, you have access to this window. On the left panel, we can see all the components that are used to build the projects. And on the right side, on this whiteboard, we are going to drag and drop the components. The first step is related to data. It is possible to load CSV files as well as SQL tables. The next step is transform. It is possible to perform some operations on data, visualize, there are some different types of plots, model. In this tab, we can see all the algorithms. For example, logistic regression, random forest, gradient boosting, as well as naive base that we are going to use in this lecture. The next tab is related to evaluate the models. After the model or the algorithm is trained, we need to evaluate it in order to check if the performance is good. And finally, the last one is related to unsupervised learning. In this lecture, we are going to start by testing naive base algorithm. We are going to drag and drop the datasets components. There are some ready to use datasets, so we don't need to load or to build our custom data. Double click, we can see here a list of the available datasets, as well as the description. As we can see, there are a lot of different datasets, and the one we are going to use during the lectures, it is Zoo, a dataset that contains 17 binary attributes that describe animals. Features include information, about presence of hair, feathers, and teeth, report if animal is aquatic or airborne, and alike. Animals are named and are classified into seven categories, amphibian, bird, fish, insect, invertebrate, mammal, and reptile. These are the classes or the objective of the classification. Based on the information about the animals, the goal is to classify the type or the category. Double click in the dataset. We can see that it has started downloading. You can see this green circle next to the dataset which means that it has been successfully downloaded. Now we can visualize the data. We can use these other components, data table, drag and drop, and we just need to connect them. Double click, see here all the data that it is available. 100 instances, 16 features. We can see here the class or the goal of the classification. 
the type of the animal, mammal, fish, birds, invertebrates, and so on. And here are all the attributes. Hair, yes or no. Feathers, yes or no. Eggs, milk, airborne, aquatic, predator, toothed, backbone, briefs, venomous, fins, the number of legs, tail, domestic, and finally cat size. Based on all these features of the animals, the goal is to classify the type. We can visualize statistics about the data by using the distribution components in the visualize tab. So we just need to drag and drop and connect them. Double click. We can visualize some graphs about the data. We can see here that it is possible to split the data by any column we want. For example, we want to split the data by the type of the animal, which is the class. So now it is possible to visualize the frequency on the y-axis and the hair attribute that is selected here, along with the values. For example, hair equals to no and hair equals to yes. We can see the colors of each one of the classes. For example, bird is in red color as we can visualize here. It means that all birds don't have hair. We can see other attributes. For example, now bird is in the yes part of x-axis since all birds have feathers. If you want, you can select each one of the attributes in order to visualize the data. It is a very interesting tool since you can extract some initial insights about the data. The next step is to open the model tab. Let's select and drag and drop the naive base algorithm. And we just need to connect the components. When the components are connected, it means that the training has started. Just a reminder that in naive base algorithm, the training step is to create the probability table. We can double click. No parameter is available for this algorithm. Now we can visualize the results. We can go to Evaluate tab, Test and Score, Connect the components, double click. No result has been shown here because we also need to connect the data to Test Score. Double click on Test Score. See here that there are two options to train the algorithm. The first one, the default, is cross-validation. We are going to see more details about it later on in this section. I'm going to use the second option, which is the random sampling. We can visualize here the training set size I will change to 80%. It means that 80% of the data is going to be used to create the probability table. And 20% of the data is going to be used to evaluate the algorithm. Just a reminder, let's suppose that this data here is equivalent to 80%. They are going to be used to train the algorithm. After it is trained, we need different data to evaluate it, so we can measure the performance. Let's suppose that all this data here is used to evaluate it. 
it can be 20% of the data. So, we just need to send each one of these instances to the algorithm in order to classify them. We have here the original data, the probability table is created, and then when we have a new customer that has just arrived in the bank, we need to perform the calculations to classify the risk, high, moderate, or low, as you have learned in previous lectures. In this case, we can see that this customer will be classified as risk equals to low. In this example, 80% of the data is being selected to create the probability table, and 20% of the data is selected to evaluate, or in other words, 20% of the data will be sent to the probability table and the probability calculations will be performed. It means that a probability will be generated for each one of the classes. Just a reminder that there are seven different classes in this data set. See here that there are 100 instances. It means that 80 instances will be used for training and 20 instances will be used for testing. Let's go back to test and score. There are some metrics to evaluate the algorithm. In these lectures, we are going to use CA, which means the classification accuracy. The result is 90%. To better understand this metric, we can use this other component, which is the confusion matrix. Connect then, double click, and see here that now it will be easier to see the results. This result is considering all the data. And see here the intersection between the classes. For example, amphibian and amphibian. Number 10 means that there are 10 amphibian animals in the data and all of them have been correctly classified as amphibian. Number zeros here means the errors. For example, number zero in the intersection between amphibian and bird means that there are zero amphibians in the data set that have been classified as bird, as well as zero amphibians in the data set that have been classified as fish. Regarding bird, 40 and zeros to the left and to the right. It means that all birds have been correctly classified, as well as the fish, the insect, and we can see here the invertebrate. We can visualize here the intersection. Number 8 means that 8 invertebrate animals have been correctly classified as invertebrate, but there are some errors in the classification. Seven invertebrates have been classified as insects. Five invertebrates have been wrongly classified as reptile. Regarding mammal, 76 mammals have been correctly classified as mammal. Only one mammal has been classified as reptile. Three mammals have been classified as amphibian. And finally, we can visualize the intersection between reptile and reptile, the row and the column. Six means that six reptiles have been correctly classified as reptiles, and four reptiles have been wrongly classified as amphibian. The confusion matrix is very useful 
to evaluate the performance of each one of the classes. And regarding the value 90%, it means that the algorithm was able to classify 90% of the data. In the next lectures, we are going to compare this metric with the other algorithms. So, we can choose the best one according to the data set. If you are satisfied with the results, we can save the model. It is also possible to just click here and the available components will be shown. We can click here on Save Model. We can click on Save, for example, the name, Nave Base, and you need to specify the location. Click on Save. What we can do after the model is saved, use this component, load model, double click. Here we just need to select the folder, select the file. What we can do after is to use another component. The name is predictions, and we just need to send the data. Let's suppose that you have new data that you do not know the class the animals belong to. So you just connect your data to the predictions component. When we open it, we can visualize the predictions for each one of the classes. For example, the first one we have here that the type is memo and the prediction is memo, it is correct. Memo and memo, fish and fish, memo and memo, and so on. To evaluate the algorithm, we can compare the class that is already available in the dataset with the prediction. We can see one error here. The type in the dataset is memo, but the prediction is reptile. Another error here, memo and reptile, memo and amphibian. This is how it is possible to calculate the classification accuracy, since the real class of the animal is present on the dataset. Basically, a comparison is made between the original data and the predictions of the algorithm. We compare both values in order to have classification accuracy. That's all for this lecture. See you next time!